Welcome. Many thanks, guys, for being here. Uh, it's nice to see a lot of people interested in workflows in general. Uh, my name is Ricardo Zanini. I'm at Red Hat. I'm a principal software engineer. And today, we're going to talk about uh, workflows and uh, basically two projects that I'm involved with in the community. Uh, the first one, the CNCF Service Workflow Specification. Um, our implementation at Red Hat, what we're doing for that spec, and uh, a little bit of demonstrations, use cases, and as promised in the description of this talk, by the end, hopefully, you guys will be, met, will be uh, able to, to create your own workflow project using this technology, right? Okay, uh, first thing about the spec itself. Um, it is a CNCF sandbox project for uh, quite some time. We are working towards incubation right now. Uh, it is a, a DSL to describe workflows. So we are working through this um, to be a vendor neutral with specification to describe workflows. So uh, any kind of technology or implementation on projects out there, being you know, open source or not, can use this spec, you know, all the, the workflows descriptors, um, the parts of the specification to do the, all the implementation in your site. I wanna talk about a little bit more about that. Uh, being a spec on CNCF, you know, open source, uh, we are focusing on standards. So everything that we do, everything that we connect, uh, or um, are supposed to have a standard. So it is like uh, open API, gRPC, all those kind of things. All, all those kind of things. It is uh, related to the to the spec as well. I'm gonna explain that a little, a little bit more. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of projects and companies already helping us there in the in the in the spec side. And we are of course working, <laughs> looking for contributors. So uh, if you're interested in workflows or if your company is somewhat interested in workflow, would be nice to have you there. You know, to share your ideas or maybe taking a look in the spec and see if that fits your use case or not. If it is not, we can talk and we can change some things. Everything is you know uh, open to talk. So it is a, a very wel welcome and warm community. So go there, and if you scan the QR code, you went to the serverlessworkflow.io. There's all the information is there. We also have um, a Slack channel at the CNCF Slack. So you go for serverless workflow, and you have a channel there. We can connect, we can talk, and you can ping me offline if you want. Uh, okay, let's talk about a bit a bit more about the specification itself. Um, so it is based on the standards, like I said. Uh, the first thing is cloud events. So uh, a workflow running on serverless infrastructure is supposed to have you know, uh, support for events, support for cloud events, of course, because uh, we are tied to that specification as well. Well, um, so any, we choose cloud events because of obvious reasons. It's, a, it's like a standard, it is open, it's not uh, within CNCF as well and um, it has a, a way to structure your events. And <clears throat> for workloads, that would be uh, super in handy because uh, you can use events to start a workflow, you can produce a workflow from, a, from, you can produce an event from a workflow, you can consume an event from a workflow. So it is uh, pretty handy. I will show you uh, a little bit more about that in a, in a minute. Uh, also, to connect to other services, you know, like we have a workflow and you need to compose other services, uh, you usually have to connect um, to external services. So for that, uh, you can have open API specification to connect with your workflow to describe uh, your service and methods that you want to call and you use open API uh, specification to do that. As well, async API, gRPC, and GraphQL, all of them are supported uh, by spec. So you can describe your functions uh, within the workflow using all those standards. Um, and of course, we have workflow patterns like uh, control flow for execution order, error handling, data management, data filtering, uh, data transformation. Uh, we have uh, an expression language, not, not, we don't have an expression language itself, but uh, we do support JQ and JSON path. So uh, while you're running your workflow, uh, and imagine that you're composing with other services, you are calling other services and orchestrating your services. Uh, sometimes you need to change um, the, the payload or you need to change the, 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 the JSON uh, that you're receiving or 
doing anything with, it, of, with the data itself. So uh, you can use GQ or uh, JSON path within uh, the workflow runtime to change the data. Um, let's go. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, this is the main building blocks uh, of a workflow within the, the, the specification. The first thing is like functions definitions. So uh, like I was describing uh, in the previous slide, we can connect to other services via uh, async API, op uh, open API, and et cetera. So there you describe how uh, you're going to uh, call those functions and how that function should look like. Uh, the arguments, inputs, authentication, and, and other things. Uh, events, so you can describe which event that, you, that you're producing or which, or which event you are consuming within the workflow via the events payload. Sorry, the event uh, definitions. Uh, and then the, the last but not least states there when you describe, of course, the states of uh, your workflow, right? So this is basically uh, the backbone, the, um, the, 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 the fundamental st st structure of the uh, our workflow based on the serverless workflow specification. Uh, there's a lot of more, <laughs> much more things, but in a nutshell, it, that's uh, how you describe a workflow. So you can use either JSON or YAML files to describe, which support both. And uh, you can go to the serverless workflow.io, and we have like, there, of course, the specification itself that describes everything in detail and uh, how you're supposed to you know, manage all, all of that. Um, okay, so uh, let's move forward on that. And now, speaking about the project that I'm also uh, involved with, that is the implementation of the specification. So uh, we have um, this work uh, on CNCF, working with the spe uh, specification, it is super nice. There's a lot of people, a lot of companies helping us there, but also uh, to en engage with the specification to have something, we need an implementation, of course. Implementation is a runtime that is capable to run uh, the, the workflow definitions that you, that, that you have defined before, you know, you know, JSON or YAML file, you need the platform, you need the runtime engine. So that's uh, when we come up with this idea of uh, this project that we call Cogito. That is, uh, it is our implementation at Red Hat. Uh, it is not a product yet. It is the, uh, we are working in a community. So we are uh, leading the path, you know, uh, within, the, within the company to, to, to bring that to the product. Uh, unfortunately, I can't disclose uh, anything <laughs> about that. But uh, yeah, it is like a, uh, a project based on Kubernetes and Knative. That is the, our idea of uh, infrastructure in the cloud. So uh, for obvious reasons, Knative uh, would be our um, you know, chosen in serverless infrastructure um, to build on top of. And uh, I don't know, uh, who knows Quarkus? Just raise your hand. Okay, nice. Well, um, Quarkus is, it is a uh, framework for uh, Java applications, so, so you can create your Java applications. Usually, uh, in the past, people used, used, I don't know, Spring Boot, JBoss, there's a lot of, a lot of tooling there. Um, now, Red Hat's talking about Quarkus. Quarkus, uh, it is a, a Java framework that's focused on cloud-native applications. So, uh, for us, it would make a lot of sense to be on top of Quarkus, our platform, because our language of choose was Java. And uh, the, the runtime offered a lot of things among like extensions. So in the, these extensions, we have authentication, persistence, you know, network, a lot of things that we uh, decided would be uh, a nice addition to the project as well. And of course, on top of that, we have the engine itself that parses the workflow, that runs the workflow, that has the definition. And we have a DOMS that you can have, well, uh, for this workflow, I wish to persist on Postgres database, or I wish to persist my workflows instance in, on a MongoDB, whatever, um, or I need to engage with Kafka or any other uh, broker uh, technology. So in this case, uh, we have a DOMS that you can like create and your application, your workflow application mount like a puzzle, you know, uh, with building blocks of all those technology. So you can deploy uh, your application in the serverless uh, platform. All right, so um, this is super nice. I will with just, 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 just talking, right? So it is nice to start in doing some demonstrations and uh, what we can do with this technology. 
uh, that we have now. Uh, in this QR code, you can, you can uh, scan and save for later. You can take a look into the repository that I have this application in place. Uh, this is a, a, a use case um, that, it, that we came up with uh, that could be leveraged along the, the workflow technology. So uh, imagine that you have this uh, use case of a newsletter subscription. So someone enters in your, enters in your website or you know, your, your, your platform and wish to uh, subscribe to a new, uh, to your newsletter or something that you have there. Um, so uh, the next step is like, well, uh, let's verify if this email is you know, okay, does it exist in our database or not. We subscribe and we send an email to the person that subscribed to the, to the, to the newsletter or whatever. And uh, we wait for that verification because you know, someone could have your email and, and go there and, and subscribe for you and you start receiving spam and uh, you don't like it. So uh, it is nice to have a, a way to verify if the person that sends that email it is that person. So uh, in, that, in that part, the workflow should, what? Halt and wait for the verification itself for the person that uh, subscribe to say, hey, uh, yeah, I, I did that subscription and I wish um, to have that newsletter uh, in my in mailbox. Whatever. And in the end, after receiving a verification, we can broadcast this new subscription into the platform. What that means? Well, uh, we can produce a cloud event within the platform and other you know, stakeholders, actors, other services, brokers, whatever can listen to that and act upon that event and do a new thing. Imagine, I don't know, maybe um, broadcasting to your marketing team and say, hey, uh, we just received a new subscription. Why not send you know, a welcome email for them, something like that. So this is a, uh, I, I believe, a simple use case that people can you know, understand and uh, how that uh, could be, how we could leverage our workflow technology to implement this. Um, so imagine now that we have this service that has our subscription database. So it is a REST service in your platform and you need to interact with that service and you need to call that service to say, hey, um, I, wish to, um, I, I wish to subscribe in a new person. I wish to um, confirm that subscription and whatever. So how do I call that service, that external service? Uh, and when I wait for a verification, how do I do that? How do I halt my, uh, my execution and wait for a new event to come or a new request to my workflow to come to resume the workflow and go further. Um, this is the infrastructure that I come up with. Um, you know, like I, I described, the Cogito project is like uh, building blocks with, uh, based on Quarkus, Kubernetes, Knative. So uh, we give you the tools for this first iteration of the project. Uh, it is more focused on developers. So uh, if we give you the tools so you can, you're capable to implement something like this. And in this case, we have like, uh, once I receive a new request of a new subscription, I do, uh, you know, I persist that, that information. My workflow is a Knative service. By the way, my subscription service also it is a Knative service. Could be, you know, uh, a lot of Knative functions as well We work. But in this case, it is like one service just for demo purpose. Um, so, and my workflow will make, you know, requests um, to the subscription service. So how can we do that? Um, for this uh, uh, demo, we are using the open API uh, definition, so, so we can call that service. That service has their own database, you know, do all their stuff there. And uh, our workflow will halt the execution and waiting for a confirmation email. Uh, as soon as the people click on the confirmation email, we come up uh, with KU21 <laughs> uh, in the candidate platform, and uh, we resume the execution and the, uh, the final subscription. So let me show you this application running. All right, so this is the front end <laughs> uh, of our, our subscription application. Uh, it's just a demo, please don't take that, they take that with a grain of salt. Uh, in the QR code that I showed you in a couple of slides, slides ago, you've, you have the, the link for the um, GitHub project that has you know, all these services in there, the description and everything else. Uh, I will, you can take a look later if you're interested. 
and let's get back to the application. All right. So um, if we go in our Kubernetes uh, instance, we don't have any pods in this namespace. We have only the Postgres database that is the technology that we are using to you know, uh, persist our information, persist all these subscription things and workflow executions, et cetera. And as soon as I uh, like create a new subscription, let's, let's see if that works. Please work. <laughs> All right, uh, let's put my email here. All right, I suppose to add a loading screen, but uh, when I do the first request, my pod starts working. You know, uh, we scale to one uh, because we need that service, the workflow to start execution, uh, the execution and wait for the confirmation uh, to be done so we can uh, resume the, 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 the execution of the workflow. So uh, we can wait a couple of minutes, a couple of, minutes, no, a couple of seconds, uh, and you see that all the pods will just you know, uh, be scaled to zero because we are using the serverless uh, uh, infrastructure technology. And uh, I don't know if you guys were uh, yesterday in the candidate call, but we had a lot, a lot of great talks. One of them was about um, code starts, so uh, that's why uh, you know, I didn't <laughs> do all the, the, the things that I, sh I supposed to do, you know, uh, like um, caching the image or things that would be able to you know, start my, my pods uh, quicker. So that's why it is a, taking uh, some time to, 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 to scale to one. So uh, meanwhile, let's take a look into, into the flow itself so you can understand what I did there. Okay, please, internet work. Right, so um, this is a Java project. I'm, I'm gonna explain to you guys in a few uh, moments how you create your own. But uh, yeah, this is a, a, just a regular JSON resource file within my project that is the description of my workflow. So in the first part, we have the events here. Um, we have two events, one that I, that I can produce and one that I can consume. The one that I can produce, uh, it is described like, well, uh, as soon as I end the workflow, I will create a new subscription event. And I have one that I can consume, that is the, confirm, the, the, the subscription confirmation uh, event. And also, this is the description of my functions. So my functions, they are, are all based on OpenAPI um, specifications. So they, within my project, I have a YAML file def, you know, describing my OpenAPI. In the end, after the hashtag, you can see the method name of that open API spec. Uh, this file for demo only, it is you know, in the project, but uh, could be you know, a remote file, an HTTP, you can access via HTTP file system, whatever um, class path will support a lot of um, ways of, you know, to retrieve the specification file. So uh, in runtime, the engine will generate the code the REST tubs able to, to call those REST services for you. So, and uh, if this open API has like, I don't know, authentication and other things, we also generate those things and you can configure uh, your calls using whatever authentication mechanism you have, like AP, API key or uh, OAuth 2, whatever. And uh, here's the description of the uh, state self, the, the sequence of the states. So uh, JSON is a bit, little bit odd um, you know, to see. So let's take a look into the image itself. I think it is easier to understand. Um, this is based on an editor that we are uh, currently working on that you can, you, know, just, you can type your workflow. We have IntelliSense and in the, in the other hand of the VS Code, you can see um, the, the workflow um, being created. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, in a couple of minutes. So um, the first thing is like, well, we receive the request, we verify if email is, is valid or not. And, uh, and if it exists in our database. And uh, if it exists, uh, we just finish the workflow, there's nothing to do, we just receive something, someone that's already resubscribed and that's it. Uh, and on the other hand, if we don't have this, uh, this email on our database, uh, we subscribe, we insert this, 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 this information in our data, in database, or we call the this, this service, we call the, the, the subscription service and say, hey, uh, this is a new subscription, save it. And we halt, we stop. 
this is a callback uh, type of state. So we stop, we halt, like I showed you in the demo. And um, let's see, we don't have any pause anymore. And I'm going to confirm my subscription. Once we confirm our subscription, we resume the execution of the workflow and uh, we do the confirmation state, which is another operation that we call this remote subscription service and say, hey, uh, this person is now subscribed to our uh, newsletter. And by the end of the workflow, we produce a new, a new event. And let's see that how that worked. Uh, you know, we have both services, the, the workflow service and the service that we uh, just called. And I have this, I don't know if you can see, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, this is just a, uh, a way to display, uh, to consume the event that we just um, published. It is a, uh, a, an event display container from Knative. You can see the, the cloud event that we produced based on the information that we have there. So uh, anyone in a platform could listen to this event and react upon that. So you can build an event-driven architecture based on this technology as well. Okay, all right, uh, we have like 10 minutes. And um, I would like to you know, uh, fulfill my promise that I have uh, in, this, in, in the description of the, of the talk. I hopefully you guys uh, are waiting for that or not, I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's try to do that together. Uh, you don't need a laptop or anything, I will you know, do everything here. Uh, this is how uh, we're going to create uh, our first workflow so you can you know, um, try technology, understand what it is, um, play around with that. Uh, even though uh, you don't know Java, you don't need to know Java, you just need to you know, play around with, the, with, the, with those tooling. Um, this is the, like I said, this is the first iteration of the project. So in this first iteration, we are aiming for uh, Java developers, not Java developers, but developers in general, that can you know, uh, uh, use this technology to be their own workflows. But uh, in the future um, that we are just planning, uh, you don't need you know, to know any kind of underneath technology whatsoever. Uh, it's, it, I will show you guys a POC that we are preparing, so how you can leverage workflows without knowing this technology, just you know, drag and drop you know, the, 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 the boxes of the, the states of the workflows, describing your functions, uh, assessing a service registry to, to uh, retrieve your functions to call, to do you know, a lot of things. Well, um, for this stage, uh, what are you gonna need? Your Java SDK, of course, Maven, Quark CLI. Quark CLI, uh, it is the tooling that we chose to build on top uh, of this technology and what we are doing right now to create uh, a new project. So uh, this command line will create a new project from the scratch. So you don't, you don't need to do anything. You just have to run this. And let me run here. No, not here. Wrong. Okay. Maybe here. Okay. All right. So... Uh, Oh gosh, it's terrible. Let me see if I can. Yeah. All right. Uh, what, what, what we're trying to do here? So I'm creating like a skeleton of a project with some extensions uh, and some building blocks uh, from Quarkus and from Cogito to create this project. And in the last line, it is the the name of my project. So when my namespace and my, in the name of my project and the version. So uh, I just. Sit, sit down, whoa, all right. Um, yeah, this happens. All right. Uh, so what Quark is gonna do is going to create a, uh, um, a project for us so we can go ahead and open on, on Visual Studio Code and open this folder here that we just created. See uh, where it is. No, oh, wrong. Documents. All right. All right. So this is a, just a regular Java project. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing new. If you if you if you were familiar with Java, you'll be you know super comfortable to work with. And um, in the resource directory, I'm gonna create a new file. Um, this is the name of my workflow, the name of my file, whatever I want. Um, and then I have to you know, describe like this. 
uh, as the ABLU and YAML file, or it could be a JSON file, but I, I, I think that this audience prefers YAML file, right? Um, let's go and copy and paste the workflow so we can do not take too much time. Uh, I'm gonna share this presentation after, you know, in the, in the SCAD web uh, application so you can download there. But uh, in this QR code here, you can scan and you can have access to this project at GitHub so you can you know, do whatever uh, after the, the presentation itself. Uh, all right, let's copy and paste here. And as you see, the editor will re replicate what you just described in your workflow into a, uh, a nice image so you can have a big picture. So you, you, you might also uh, talk with business persons or you know, other stakeholders or people that are interested in the work that you're doing and what you're doing, and uh, they can see clearly. This, they don't need to be you know, uh, super technical to understand this kind of stuff. So it has business value as well. Uh, so let's try to understand what, is do, wh what we are doing here. So the first state is just a state to inject uh, a data in our payload. In this case, hello. And uh, the, the next state, uh, we're going to just you know, use our built-in function that you know, prints in the, in the, in the console. Uh, the data that we have, and uh, in the end, that is the interesting part, that is the state data filter. So, um, as you know, workflows works like this. Uh, the input of a workflow, it is the output of the, the previous one, right? So, uh, in this case, the last state will um, produce a, a, a a new payload because we have this state data filter uh, for output. So the output of this last state, the print state, uh, we want to apply that JQ expression there. All right. So let's see that working. Well, we have yeah, we have we have time. Um, let me see a new terminal. All right. So if I run Quarks Dev, please work. Um, it will compile, build my project, and uh, we're going to start in what we call in Quarkus dev mode. So uh, you can access the application and play around with that. So yeah, let's please work. Okay. Yay, Wi-Fi. Yeah. No, I, I, totally fine. I have time. I have time. Okay. Yeah. Thank me. All right. Um, this is just a regular Quarkus application. If you go to the Quarkus guides and you create a, a, a new application, you'll see you know, something like that. And the uh, in interesting part it is the Swagger uh, UI. So what Kujita does, it is take your workflow, take your description, and generate a, a new REST application for you. So this is like a, a, a regular REST service within your environment. So you can do whatever you want. This, what, what, what happened? Please help. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, we generate an open API um, specification for you. So uh, imagine that you have a lot of workflows and you want to call them. You can import all these you know, specifications between them, or you can use in Postman, you can use whatever you want. And this is, a, uh, 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 in a sense, a Cogito workflow application for you. So greetings is the name of a workflow. If you recall in the ID of my workflow, I have the, the word greetings. That would be, you know, my endpoint here. So to start the workflow, uh, I have to, to make a post uh, request to this workflow. Let me, all right. So I have to, to do a post request to this workflow with this JSON payload here. Uh, we have a way to describe the input uh, scheme for, for the workflow. Uh, for you know, simplicity, I didn't add, so I have to add manually here. But if you, if you add a JSON schema for the input of uh, your workflow, it will be there. So it, it would be nice. Uh, let's say cube call. And I can execute. All right. Uh, this is the response of the execution of my workflow. So it is, hello, kubecon, and uh, it's pretty, pretty funny and easy to do. Uh, let me know, but it is just for demo purposes, you can download the other example that is much more complex than a lot of uh, other features there. But uh, the nice thing is, well, what happened? 
I don't know. Okay, start again. Whoa, I fought over her and being detected in the jungle. Okay. Never seen that before. <laughs> Five, okay. This is the last thing. All right. So, well, what I, I was going to do is like, well, uh, while in dev mode, you can um, change whatever you want in your project. Like instead of hello, I can add hi. And this is brings a lot of value to the, to the developer. So when you, you're creating your workflows, you're trying, you're testing, et cetera, so you can um, leave in dev mode, testing and whatever, change your workflow. Anytime that you change and you save the file um, and you do you know, another uh, execution or you, you refresh the application, you, you see the change that you made uh, in, in, your, in your application. So in this case, I changed hello from hi and just you know, as magically changed my, uh, the application as well. All right, uh, last thing, uh, um, it is the, oh, oh, where are you? Okay, okay, here. All right, uh, we do the dev, and now, you know, uh, about deploying. So um, what this um, Quarkus application does, it is like we generate all the, the YAML files that we need to, to have uh, in order to deploy um, any Kubernetes instance that you have. So uh, in this case, I have Minikube, so we have to set up a few things. But first, um, it is the, yeah, I want to delete this. Stop, please, okay. All right, you can clear. So yeah, first thing is like, we are preparing my uh, Minikube environment so I can push the image to the internal registry easily. That's the way I do. You can you know, do the, the way you want, that doesn't matter. It is just a regular Java Quarkus application in, in the end. And here, uh, we're going to build an image uh, based on the project that we already have and generate uh, all the YAML files to be able to push to a K-native environment. Uh, Kujito has a, a very um, tight mm, integration with K-native. So uh, we have an add-on that calls K-native eventing. And uh, when uh, you have events in your, in your workflow, we generate all of the Knative uh, uh, um, objects like uh, source, sync, bindings, triggers, brokers, etc., uh, in order to um, you know bind the the, the up, your application with the Knative platform. So this is really cool. Uh, in the example that I showed you about the newsletter subscription, you go into the GitHub, you can see that in practice. Uh, all right, so please build the image. I don't know what's happening today. I test this multiple times, and it was like one minute. <laughs> Come on, all right, yeah, the Wi-Fi, yeah, yeah. Please, demo gods, okay, it's, it is working. Uh, so yeah, since we have access to the mean cube uh, registry, uh, you can see our image that just pushed to the, to the, to the registry right now. And um, Quarkus and Cogito will generate um, the information, no, 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 one, two, one, but uh, the information that you that you need, uh, you know, the the YAML files that you need to deploy uh, in your in your instance. So in this case, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, I can go there and apply. Hopefully, we work. Please work. Yeah, and I can do same thing like this: scan service list, and you see, uh, you know, the service there. It is. Wrapping up, becoming ready, becoming ready. Okay, it is ready. And we can access, and it's the same application, right? So yeah, that's the, that's the idea behind all. I, hopefully I could you know, uh, go through all of that. We have only one minute, two questions, if you have any questions. Uh, if uh, we do not, you can uh, ping me offline. <laughs> that's the way I'll, I'll be around, okay, we can talk. All right, main thanks, guys. Any questions? All right. Well, this is the the networks, the social network. So my LinkedIn there, more examples and blog. Uh, if you want to take a, a picture and see, we can talk later. Okay. Thank you.